We have nine o'clock. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the October 10th meeting of the Board of County Commissioners. My name is Shelley Bueller, and I have the privilege of serving as chair of the commission uh, alongside Commissioner Bob Archer and Commissioner Kevin Cook. Good morning. Good morning. So, Madam Clerk, we do have a request to pull item G1, so unless there is objection, uh, we will pull that item. It's at the very end of the agenda. First item, please. Item three, consent agenda. Are there questions on the consent agenda? None? Motion to approve is so presented. There's a motion to approve by Commissioner Archer. Second. Second by Commissioner mm. Cook. All in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed no. Motion carries three to zero. Item four, new business, A County Clerk number one, consider all voucher payments. Madam Chair, this morning we have one set of voucher payments dated October 9, 2013. Total amount of $1,216,782.18. Uh, my uh, questions have all been answered by the appropriate people, and I'll make a motion to approve the vouchers as presented. Second. There's a motion by Commissioner Archer, second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor of the motion say aye. Oppose no. Motion carries <coughs> three to zero. Item A2, consider correction orders. Move approval. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Oppose no. Motion carries three to zero. Item A3, public hearing for the attachment of certain lands to rural water district number one, Jackson County, Kansas, and consider approval of the order of attachment. Uh, and commissioners, uh, even though th this item was on my, uh, under my name, uh -huh. uh, the uh, uh, I think uh, the att attorney for <coughs> Jackson, uh, or the or rural water district number one from Jackson County is here, Mr. Hansen. All right, good deal. And at this time, we'll open the public hearing. <coughs> Thank you, and good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm Gary Hansen. I'm one of the lawyers for Rural Water District Number One of Jackson County. <coughs> and with me here today, to my far left, is Greg Dronofsky, the district's manager, and Lewis Funk of Barnett West, the district's engineer. Um, we're here this morning on uh, a request for your approval to an attachment of certain lands to the territory of Rural Water District Number One. Uh, this occurs on. Uh, written petition signed by landowners in the affected area. Uh, these are actually two tracks, and I know Lewis has with him uh, a larger scale uh, colored map that may be helpful for you to refer to if, if that, if you'd like. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> these are uh, two general tracks that I, I may refer to occasionally as the northern track and the southern track. They don't, they're not contiguous. Um, these are made up of uh, actually 133 different landowners, uh, the majority of whom signed written petitions asking that their land be attached to the district. What this does is to allow the district to be a water supplier uh, as a rural water district to those areas if they're attached. Um, much of this land, um, is made up of farms and residences that have been relying on wells over the years. The land's currently not in the territory of any rural water district. Uh, but the recent extended drought caused uh, many of those properties to have trouble with the wells and running out of water or having water that was unsafe. And so the attractiveness of, of being able to obtain water from the rural water district, I think, was enhanced in, the, in just the last few years. And the district has the ability to extend its <coughs> system <coughs> to serve this area. Uh, of course, participation in a rural water district is perfectly voluntary. Merely because the land is brought into the district doesn't require anybody to take their service. If either they, if they wish to have it, they make application and it may be approved. If they don't, then they can continue to, to use whatever supply they wish. Uh, of course, the district has absolutely no taxing authority. So 
finance. It's entirely user financed. This uh, petition has already been heard by the Jackson County Commissioners, which by law control uh, the territory of the district. But it needs to come to you for approval because a portion and actually about three-fourths of the area of the southern tract is within the three-mile uh, limit of the city of Topeka. And under state law, anytime a special district is expanding into an area three miles within the limits of a city that has exercised extraterritorial subdivision regulation like Topeka has, then it must come to the county commission where the city is located for this additional approval. If it weren't for that, we would already be done with the action taken by the Jackson County Commissioners, but in this instance, this also requires your approval, and it requires a three-fourths vote, so in this instance, that means a unanimous vote of the Commission. Um, I would say that it's fair to characterize this state law, which is KSA 19-270, concerning special districts expanding within the three-mile limits of the city. It's fair to characterize that as being <clears throat> designed to allow you to consider whether the expansion of this district is going to impact or impede a city in some future growth or expansion through annexation. And <clears throat> in effect, um, and the city was notified and, and they have not posed any objections to our knowledge uh, to this point to this. And I think the reason is because we already have an agreement with the city that deals with this. Uh, there was an agreement made uh, that the district, by the way, is a water customer of the city of Topeka and buys about half of the water that it serves to its customers it comes from the city of Topeka water treatment plant. Um, but there was an agreement made in 1998. It's been amended a couple of times since. And in effect, what that agreement says is that for those persons who want to have water service who will be within that three-mile limit, what the city calls its extraterritorial <coughs> jurisdiction. For those folks, when they make application for service to the district, they will be referred to the city and they will be asked to sign a consent to annexation. <coughs> um, that helps to assure the city that this expansion of this district and the and adding of these customers will not create an impediment to some future expansion of the city. In addition, the district has agreed with the city that in that event that there would be an annexation, that the city can buy the district out of those customers for $300 each, uh, which also serves to prevent uh, there being a problem at some future date, if and when the city were to ever annex into that area. Um, <clears throat> I don't think it's, uh, and, and we would understand, some people may, may very well not want to sign that, but that uh, consent to annexation. That's a, that would be an issue uh, that each, each owner would have to make for themselves as to whether they were willing to do that. For some, that may be enough to prevent them from wanting to be a customer of the district in that area. But for others who are desperate, uh, it's, a, it's a small price to pay for a reliable and safe uh, drinking water supply. And I think that's the majority of the people, even in that area, uh, and of course, the, the northern area is totally outside of that three-mile limit, and there is no such restriction. So um, <clears throat> what we're asking is for the commission to, uh, to grant its approval to this attachment. Um, I think these, these people who petitioned and have requested water uh, are very hopeful that, uh, that this can, in fact, occur. I don't think there is anything about what we're proposing here that makes it any more likely that the city will ever annex into this area. I don't think there's anything about it that makes it any less likely that the city will annex into this area. It simply allows the people who want water in these areas to be able to get it from Jackson County where water one. I'd be glad to answer any questions, as I'm sure would Mr. Pernaski and Mr. Clark. Okay, thank you, Gary. I do have one question. Once your boundaries, <coughs> as they're expanded, are they exclusive then? No other rural water district can Past those boundaries. In effect, yes. <coughs> yes. Okay. Yes, I think that's, I think that's a, a fair answer to that question. Is it does um, make it so that that is the district that should be the supplier within that area? Because you've got right. 
rural two on, and four on either side, right. and then Jackson County comes <coughs> down as kind of a sliver there. Right, and I think that the effect of this is to fill in all the gaps <coughs> in this part of northern Shawnee County so that there aren't any areas that are going, that will not be within the territory of a rural water district in the event that people were to want service. And, and Jackson County, number <coughs> one, has for years had many customers in northern Shawnee mm -hmm. County. You know, rural water districts are kind of like school districts. They cross. They cross county, county lines. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah, uh, probably about 80% of the district is why don't, actually. Why don't you go ahead and come <laughs> up to the podium? That way we'll capture Just your voice. Just clarification, about 80% of the district is actually outside the view of this map. So it, <coughs> it goes all the way up to Mayetta, yeah, and, uh, almost as far east as Valley Falls. Okay. Do you have anything you want to add? Okay. Um, I think we, we have some people in the audience who want to make some comments. I'm, I'm just come to the podium, and if you want to speak. I'm, but before you do that, I'm going to have Rich Eckert, our county counselor, kind of brief the commission <coughs> on a memo that, or Jonathan, maybe, Jonathan Brazon, um, that was given to the commissioners. Uh, that we have not had discussions, so um, just kind of give us a, a summary of this, Jonathan, if you would. I think Mr. Hansen hit all the major points. Did he? Yeah. Um, unanimous vote required. The legal standards are basically how this is going to impact or be incompatible with the city's future growth. And the annexation concerns he addressed. And the only other thing is we have 30 days from today's hearing to take action. To so. make a decision. Yep. But we don't have any... Um, decision on this requirement of a consent? Nope. That's contractual between the water district and the city. Okay. Madam Chair. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Razan, is there a way or is it possible to unbundle these two attachments <laughs> to consider them separately, to consider the northern attachment and then the southern attachment? I don't think there's a way to do that today. I think the water district would have to put forth a new petition if they wanted to do it that way. And so if the, in requiring the unanimous vote of the Shawnee <coughs> County Commission, if the County Commission said there's no issue with the northern part, it doesn't have any impact, it doesn't require consent to annexation, whereas the southern part does, and if there was hesitation on the Commission's part for the southern part, it would have to be tabled and then represented? As separate petitions, yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone wanting to speak on this item, just please come up to the podium and state your name, and uh, you can make your comments to the commission. <coughs> the representatives of Jackson County Water District and the Shawnee County Commissioner, and ladies and gentlemen, I am Harold Weller. I live in the southern part of Minokin Township. The reason I am addressing you today is the notice of the hearing pertaining to the annexation of parts of Minokin Township in the Jackson County Water District Number 1. If this passed, everyone in this district that gets a water meter automatically gives up all their rights <coughs> to protest the city of the people annexing them. We want to live in the county not in the city of Topeka. We don't think it's right for Jackson County Water District, number one, not telling people when they get a meter and are connected to the water line, they are giving up all their rights to protest the city to annex them into the city of Topeka. We have talked to people that have Jackson County water and they have no idea that they have given up these rights. I spent two years of my life in the United States Army, <laughs> part of it on the front lines of Korea, and I don't think that they should tell me that I have to give up my rights. Thank you, Mr. Miller. <coughs> Anyone else wanting to speak on this item? My name is Robert Krupski, and I have property that's in the southern tract of the uh, proposed uh, water district, and I'm not in favor of having it done. The, the property in question that we own has, in 2005, had seven feet of water on it, and it's never going to, it's in a floodplain. It can never have any houses. 
uh, I don't see why we need to have uh, be included in this particular water district. I know that while, while they said that the people have gone around and they've, they've filled out these petitions, you know, wanting to be in there, I know that I was contacted and had a personal visit from a member of Rural Water District Number 1 asking for me to take and agree to be included in this. And while he was very nice and everything, it didn't interest me then and it didn't interest, it doesn't interest me now. I don't see any reason why most of this, all the down through this on the southern track, it's just basically farm ground and we can't see why uh, we want to take in, I, I can't foresee it being want to be developed. It's been farm ground for as far as I can remember and I think it's just something that's just not needed. Uh, I can't ever tie on down there. It will never do me personally any good. And so I'm personally uh, against it and I don't think that it should be approved. Thank you for your comments. Okay, thank you. You can. <clears throat> I'm Arlen Kirkwood, and I'm just going to make a couple comments, and it's not going to make, it's not going to stop the water line from going in, but it's like my neighbor said, rural water has ruined rural America. And where I'm coming from is, when I moved out there in 65, on my grandfather's place, there was probably 15 cars a day going by our road. Now they're, my uncle and I didn't have anything to do one day. So we was counting cars and it averaged 30 an hour. If you don't have rural water and can't get water, you don't have people buying a tract of land, 90 acres, and building 30 houses on it. Yeah, he's right. You don't have to hook up to it, but investors come out, buy the land, then you got 30 houses on 90 acres or whatever. Then you have, across the road from me, not yet, but it's going to happen. Uh, you have do dogs barking all night. You have dogs chasing cattle. That's already happened, and, that, and the water line didn't even buy there. You have nothing but trash, unbelievable trash. You can't spray because of the drift over on their gardens. I mean, it's a, it's a total nightmare. It's not the country anymore. I'm on Northwest 46, three miles west of 75. It's not the country anymore. Some people call that progress, but I don't think it is. Thank you very much. Thank you, Arlen. Anyone else? My, na <clears throat> My name is Steve Perupski, and I'll keep it brief. Uh, one comment I want to make is on the southern tract, over three quarters of the property in this tract is farmland, and it's in a floodplain. It can never be developed. So what's the reason? We've got to have water line run down through it if we can't do anything with it. And two, why, if somebody needs water, and wants water, say, okay, we'll give you water if you sign away your rights to annexation. That does not seem fair, right, in any way, shape, or form. Two, on the northern tract, I farm land in the southern tract and the northern tract, and a lot of the northern tract that they're asking to, to include already has water lines in it. They are currently providing water to customers. So why are they operating in there now if it's not even in their district? And th those are the only things I wanted to hear. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Are there er any representatives of uh, Minokin Township here? I received some calls from them as well, but I didn't know if they were in attendance. <clears throat> I'm going to ask a question where Jonathan go. Jonathan Berzon. <laughs> Sorry. legal question um, and, and you may not know the answer but other rural water districts may have that same consent to annexation agreement or I'm are we not unsure? Aware of any, but I think that's kind of a standard thing with the city when they sell people sell water districts water. But the rural water districts their source of water is, is different um, yeah not all, not are all with the city of Topeka so okay thank you. Commission have further questions or um, <clears throat> I'd like to request your insight on the issue well I cheer I uh, I hear the concerns of the constituents in that area um, I'm on, I would I would almost like 
to defer to to seek a little bit more information. Um, I know we have to make a decision in 30 days. Um, I, ha I haven't heard from one person who, in the southern area, who wants that area extended, I guess. Uh, in your uh, presentations in Jackson County, you know, did anyone show <coughs> up from Shawnee County and express favor in this area, or? No. No, okay. And I, I'm just saying, Madam Chair, I think that yeah. to, to a considerable extent that the expression of favor is represented by the signatures of the people uh, requesting that they be attached, of which uh, there were uh, 74 individuals. I can't tell you that I can break it down between the northern portion and the southern portion, but uh, 74 residents of Shawnee County signed this petition requesting that they be attached. And if I may just address the first comment that you heard, no one will find that they are suddenly surprised that they have, by buying a uh, meter or a unit in this district, that they have waived their rights to object to an annexation. When they make application, the agreement says they will be sent to the city <coughs> for that very purpose. And so no, no one's going to get trapped here by having bought a, a unit in the district only to find that they have inadvertently waived without knowing what they were doing. They're going to be actually sent to the city offices where they will be presented that form. And if they, at that point, if they don't want to sign it, they don't have to sign it. Yeah. I don't know if I'm necessarily in favor of making a decision today because I think this public hearing has <coughs> brought a little bit more attention to this. Okay. Uh, because I think there's some misperception that, that all areas will have to consent to annexation. That's not the case. It's just within this concentrated area in the southern part, correct? correct? And so I, you know, I, I would encourage those residents in that area. I'm glad you you came today, but uh, if there's there are some that are in favor, uh, I I mm -hmm. would appreciate hearing from them how this will impact. Uh, they have water now, probably wells, correct? Um, or is the rural water district extended that far at all by no. lines? No. no. Okay. So, okay. water. Can I yes, you can, sure. There are about at least 10 or 12 folks in that southern area that have signed up that are interested in being on the water system. So that, that is, in effect, their endorsement of it, right. uh, which clearly outweighs the number of opposition. You think 10 or 12 today. are? Yeah, at least that in the, in the south part. And they fully uh, understand? Yes. Okay. Yes, the yeah. answer. Greg's the manager, but I anticipate that they have been communicated their uh, requirements to consent to annex. Commissioner Cook? I would move to defer action on this item. Uh, like you, I have concerns regarding the two tracks. I would strongly encourage us to consider taking them up as separate tracks, the northern attachment and the southern attachment. I, I find it personally objectionable that the city is, in essence, extorting water for consent to annexation. And I, I do not approve of it. And so I would be very reluctant to approve the attachment of the southern part, given the city's extortion for water. Thank you, Commissioner Cook. You made a motion to defer I a motion for any particular time. <coughs> you know, we have 30 days, but uh, on. I would leave that to the chair's discretion. Okay. Let me hear from Commissioner Archer first. Do you have any yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to study this uh, more closely, and and uh, I'd like to defer for two weeks if I can make a. I would accept. The uh, extortion is kind of a powerful word, though. Uh, but anyway, motion to uh, defer, defer for two weeks. And I'm going to. There is a motion to defer <coughs> for two weeks till October 24th. <coughs> um, there's a second, but. As far as checking in with all of you, time frame, I mean, we have 30 days to make our decision. Okay, all right. All those in favor of the motion say aye, Oppose no, motion carries three to zero. So what we've done is deferred any action until October 24th. Um, but again, I would encourage even those 10 to 12, even though they've signed this, I would still encourage them to contact the commission and let us know mm. how that may impact uh, we may come back and say, you know, you still need to separate it. Uh, we're just not there yet as far as a decision. Okay? All right. Thank you. Thank you.
Item B, Human Resources. Number one, consider authorization and execution of contract C481-2013 with the Fraternal Order of Police for the year 2013, clarifying the vacant positions and assignments procedure, providing for a two-step increase retroactive to the first day of the first pay period of 2013, clarifying overtime pay for the Spirit of Kansas Festival, and increasing the time that the sheriff has to impose this plan. Good morning, Commissioner John Tumble, Human Resources. What you have before you is a 2013 <coughs> memorandum of understanding. Uh, what was read was the highlights of what was uh, proof of changes, a couple other minor changes, uh, but uh, in my opinion, not significant. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have any for me. I have none at this time, Commissioners. Other questions of Jonathan? Okay. Anyone wanting to speak on this item? Everybody's way in the back. <laughs> I don't know if you can see me as small as I am. <laughs> Good morning. Herman Jones, Sheriff, Shawnee County. Uh, I, I just want to address, I, I know you've had a, a, a very difficult decision when we're talking about finance and you're looking for the whole county and we're looking for those type of things. I, I, and I also realize that this has been something that's been negotiated for some time and one of the items that's been uh, uh, of contention as well has been for pay. And I know, uh, Commissioner Archer, you've uh, publicly said that uh, you didn't want to give any raises or anything like that. And I can appreciate that. But, uh, but at, at the same time, understanding that you're trying to be as fair and equitable for all the other uh, employees of the county, uh, what, I, what I contend on that is that uh, I understand that. I understand also that our people that, that work for the Shawnee County Sheriff's are, are very dedicated individuals. Uh, they they put themselves out there for uh, serving the public, and I think it's as as well to be said that uh, they are in a different light than several other employees in the county. Not to say they're not dedicated throughout, but I'm just saying that these are individuals that do risk themselves day in, day out, 24 hours a day, and at the same time, uh, their responsibilities are much different than many others throughout the county. Not to say they're not important, I'm just saying they are, they do have responsibilities that are different. Um, and, and what I say of that is um, when we look at a, I don't know if you, if there is a typical employee of the county. Um, and that's where we, we get to a little bit of, a, a, of an issue of, of trying to make any type of comparison. But uh, I know just of looking at our employees and what they do, their office is basically out into the to the county. Uh, they don't have a desk job. They do drive in cars. Uh, they, they deal with people. Uh, many of the people that we deal with are, are not necessarily happy that we're there. And we do have some responsibilities where we do, uh, we actually deal with public safety and it's also for protecting and saving lives. And not only for the county, the constituents out there, but themselves. And they deal with that every day. And, and I, I just want to make sure that you hear from me that I think that's very important when you make that consideration of those. Um, I represent the people of this, of this agency, but I also represent the county and the constituents as well. And I understand that when we have individuals that are on fixed budgets uh, within themselves, this makes it, it's, it's very uh, difficult to make those type of decisions. But at the same time, I do believe that the public safety should be appreciated in that manner and equitably. When we look at other agencies, and I know we want to look at other agencies and, and what have you, I think that is a point where we do have to compare <coughs> um, of looking at individuals. No more different than I just made a, a comment that we don't, I don't think we really should, it's fair that we compare all com uh, county employees because our duties are different. Well, it's the same thing, but uh, when it goes to other agencies or so, we do like uh, uh, job responsibilities. And uh, I don't think it's fair that we would take a look at uh, our agency compared to New York City. <coughs> but if we compare <coughs> like uh, an apple is an apple, New York City is the big apple. <laughs> we have the little apple <coughs> in our state. I think we need to look at 
the smaller apples in that. And when we look at that in across the state, when we look at like agencies, I think that's what we look at and compare it. And uh, I, I think it's, it's been known that our agency or some of our, our officers have been less than, less paid. And I'm just asking that we take and, and look at that and show some, some appreciation for the people that do dedicate themselves. We don't have a lot of people that leave our agency. Why is that? I think it's dedication. Just like a lot of people throughout the county that work here for a purpose. But at the same time, I, I know I appreciate it. And I think it's any type of movement that you can to show the appreciation that we have for our people that dedicate themselves for, for this county and the people that work here, uh, that live here. I think that would be much appreciated. Thank you, Sheriff. <coughs> Madam Chair, if I, if I may, yes. uh, <coughs> you said that I did not want to give employees a pay raise. That's not true. I'd love to give everybody a pay raise. But what I've said is it's not fair to taxpayers. It's not fair to other county employees. And we absolutely can't afford it. Now, in a couple of weeks, we're going to start laying off employees all over the county. And to be honest with you, I can't oversee the layoff of dozens of county employees and giving raises to other groups of employees. My conscience will not allow me to do that. So thank you for your comments, okay. Sheriff. I well, appreciate it. In that right there, the same <clears> thing of laying off, I have not hired people. So in essence, we do, we have gone through a layoff. And at the same time, we are losing some individuals that we probably will not be able to hire. So, in essence, we are going through a layoff as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Sheriff. Do you have anything? Yes, yeah. Sheriff Jenkins. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else wanting to speak on this item? <clears throat> um, I just have a few statements. All other bargaining units settled in 2013 with a one plus one step increase. And at the very least, the FOP was looking at the same outcome. The cost for a one-on-one -on -one for the FOP was $113,000. In February of 2013, this body came to a consensus to offer the FOP a two-step increase at a cost of $123,235 for the FOP. That offer was rejected. Right before fact-finding was to begin, our staff consulted with the three of us to see if we wanted to make one more attempt to settle. It was at that time that there was a split on the commission, and I have been consistent in my stance. The difference of the two offers is $10,235. With the approval of this contract, all employees will have received a modest increase in their salaries for 2013. Madam Chair. Commissioner Cook. <clears throat> As you stated, this is a carryover from okay. last year. Mm. This is not something that this commission walked into on day one as a new issue. It was an old issue. All of the bargaining units, as you indicated, had their matters resolved with raises. The FOP had not. And so while all of their bargaining units have had nine months to appreciate that salary increase, this bargaining unit has not. I think that when we look at some of the comments that have been made in our newspaper or media, I think that it fails to recognize that when a person resigns from a law enforcement position or a corrections physician, the taxpayers are going to pay the bill for that training. For a law enforcement officer, we're talking about 16 weeks of training just for a new recruit. Usually that new employee does not have the background or work experience in law enforcement that an officer on the job already has acquired. Now I think that the paper also fails to recognize that when people resign for other positions, the taxpayers of Shawnee County are losing the benefit of an experienced officer that's already on duty. And that's not something that you can attach a dollar value to, but it is an important fact. Finally, I think that sometimes people forget that government at all levels is not always about money, however essential it is. The way that government employees at any level are treated speaks volumes about a society and its values. And I think that as an employer, we have a duty to our employees, and I will be approving this contract. Madam Chair, I move for approval of the FOP contract. 
There's a motion to approve, and I'm going to second that discussion. I do have one one final comment, uh, Madam Chair, before we, we close this. Uh, a recent study I saw said that in the private sector over the past decade, private sector employees have received a 4% salary increase in real terms over the past 10 years. That's the lowest rate of salary increase since the Great Depression of 1929 and 1939. And the reason that is is because there's been layoffs. There have been massive layoffs in almost every industry. Over the last 10 years, members of the FOP have received a 76% increase in their salary, 76 percent. I'd like somebody to tell me one other organization, group of employees, bargaining unit that has received anywhere near a 76 percent increase in their pay. So I won't support this. Again, uh, my conscience won't let me uh, burden our taxpayers and our other employees. And again, I don't think we can afford it. So thank you, Madam Chair. Further discussion? The only other additional comment. This salary increase was already budgeted into the 2013 budget. So we are not extending it above what was already budgeted. Mm -hmm. Agree. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. No. Motion, motion carries two to one. Commissioner Archer dissenting. Next item, please. Item C, Bond Council number one, consider approval of resolution number 2013-134, authorizing the sale, issuance, and, and delivery of general obligation bonds series 2013 in conjunction with the special assessments arising from street and sewer, sewer and street improvements in the Timber Ridge subdivision. Good morning, Bob Perry. This resolution uh, reaffirms the sale of the bonds that occurred last week, last Thursday to be exact, and authorizes the execution and delivery of the rest <coughs> of the uh, documents related to the issue. Uh, when I prepared the resolution for uh, delivery on you know, Monday, when I was going back through the documents uh, with uh, the investment bankers for the uh, uh, final official statement, the uh, tickets were written for the first term bond. It took 2.25% as opposed to the 2.5% I had on attached to the resolution. So I'd ask that we substitute the amortization schedule I've had with the chairman so as to reflect that uh, basically we went down 25 basis points on one term bond. Okay. Questions? Are there questions? I'll move to adopt the resolution, the amended. With the new amortization schedule, correct. Thank you very much. I'll second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And clerk will set that right there. Item D, emergency management. Number one, consider approval of Home Rule Resolution Number HR 2013-5, amending Home Rule Resolution Number HR 2011-5, which established the Shawnee County Department of Emergency Management by adding the Ambulance Compliance Comms Officer as an unclassified employee under Section 3B. <coughs> Dave Sturbins, Director of Emergency Management. Um, I made a mistake that when we approved this position back in May, uh, I didn't ask to have the resolution changed. Uh, legal actually made it up for me, and I just dropped it. Um, so this is just a cleanup to make sure that, uh, who, of course, now it's Mr. Castile, is included as a, the third exempt employee in my office. It's home rule resolution. Um, usually it requires a second reading. Yes. That should still stand. It'll be back on the agenda for Monday. Any questions, though, at this point? No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Made up, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Item E, per Public Works Solid Waste, number one. Consider approval of a project budget in an estimated amount of $821,392 for the Southwest Carlson Road Bridge over Mission Creek with funding from the Federal Surface Transportation Funds in an amount of six. $603,205, Wabunsee County in an amount of 10114 and the remainder of $208,774 from Shawnee County's half cents countywide sales tax dedicated to bridges. Good morning, Commissioners. Tom Block, Public Works and Solid Waste. This is a public works item. 
as you may recall back on June 20th uh, we came before the Commission to uh, request permission to submit an application to the Kansas Department of Transportation um, wanting to uh, put in a uh, submitted application to them <coughs> to include this bridge in their offices and bridge program for 2015 we received notification <coughs> back on September 30th that this project has been awarded uh, entry into that program um, so now we are here before you um, with a project budget for this project the, the total project budget the construction of the of the bridge is estimated to be six hundred six hundred and seventy thousand the total project budget is eight hundred twenty one thousand three hundred ninety two dollars the way that this funding works for these applications is we would receive federal funding there's an 80 20 percent split of for federal funding 80 percent federal funding 20 percent local <coughs> funding for construction construction engineering and contingencies so that would be split the the cost for design uh, utility relocation and easement acquisition is then 100 percent funded by the local agencies this particular bridge is on the county line so we would share those costs with Wabunsee County and the way those costs are split is based on the valuation of the two counties so Shawnee County has about 95 and a half percent of the valuation and, and Wabunsee County would only have like four and a half percent so we would we would pick up the large majority of those costs but in, in, in any event uh, this particular bridge is what's called a fracture critical bridge um, in which and, and they are the highest priority of type of bridges that we want to replace they are the type of bridge that that they met the way they were designed is that they have no um, support from adjacent members of the bridge so if a particular member of a bridge fails the bridge fails and since that is the case the inspection requirements for these types of bridges is really going to be increased here in subsequent years so we will by being able to replace this bridge with a different type of bridge we will eliminate those uh, those uh, inspection costs so the bottom line is um, if if this project is approved and, and we would be looking at about two hundred eight thousand um, dollars that we would intend or recommend that we pay that through the countywide half cent sales tax as opposed to a total project cost of about eight hundred twenty one thousand so we would save roughly six hundred thousand dollars if we were to do this project on our own so with that uh, is our recommendation that this project be project budget be approved and I stand for questions thanks Tom Thank you for leveraging those dollars and for being diligent about uh, making sure we're mm -hmm. um, staying on top of federal transportation dollars that are out there for fracture critical bridges. And hopefully, a well, little further north, we'll find some additional yes. funds fact, for that what's, what's big one this would crossing be the Kansas River. The second to last fracture, fracture critical, critical bridge. The only one we would have left would then be the Buller Bridge. Really? <laughs> Got a, a little bit bigger price tag. A little bit bigger. Yeah. 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 Motion Questions. to approve. So motion to approve by Commissioner oh. Cook. Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Opposed no. Motion carries three to zero. Item E2, consider approval of resolutions number 2013-135 and 2013-136, <laughs> establishing the placement of a stop sign at the intersection of Southwest 56th Street and Southwest Valencia Road, and establishing the removal of a stop sign at the northwest corner of the intersection of Southwest 57th Street and Valencia Road. Uh, Commissioners Tom Block again with Public Works. Uh, this uh, too is a Public Works item. Uh, the figure I have here on the screen gives you a, a um, pictorial of this intersection. And what uh, has or what has been the case with this intersection is, if you're familiar, <coughs> this is 57th Street. It goes off west towards Dover, and there's a big sweeping curve, goes around the corner, and then turns back into the Southwest 61st Street, just to the south of it. Southwest of Valencia Road is a Mission Township road, and a, two, three years ago, they paved this to this to this point. And 57th Street here is also paved. 
this area, this triangular area in the middle, is essentially just a wide open granular surface gravel area. People use this as a travel way, but there was no defined, no defined roadway. And with this being paved now, we've come in and, and put in a short, we've paved this little section here in yellow and this little section here in yellow. So now people going north and south on Valencia Road uh, can take the whole path um, <coughs> on a hard surface road. And same with those folks going on 57th Street wanting to go to Valencia. A couple of years ago, when Mission Township paved this, we went in and placed a stop sign here and a stop sign here and one here uh, to control that intersection. Now that we've paved this, uh, we believe there's a justification or to revise the traffic control at this intersection. What we would like to do is, there is no stop sign here now, what we'd like to do is for people <coughs> traveling eastbound on 57th Street wanting to go northbound on Valencia, we want to stop them at this T intersection. And then for those folks traveling on Valencia Road southbound or northbound, we want to give them free flow. So we want to remove that stop sign. So essentially these two resolutions, one resolution is to remove the stop sign that was there, placed there two or three years ago to allow free flow north and south. And the second resolution is to place a stop sign here to stop traffic at the T intersection. Um, so that is what the resolutions are, are for. Um, so I'd stand for any questions. So Tom's still going southbound on Southwest 57th. You still are going to need to stop? Which correct? direction? If you're going southbound. No, there's a sweeping curve is here. This stop sign is just for this little segment here. Just for that little segment. This, yeah, okay. Southwest 57th, it's a sweep it's around the curve, down to 61st. Currently is free flow and it would remain free flow. Okay. But you're you're keeping that stop sign right this there? This sign would remain. That would this one would remain, okay. this one would remove, be removed, and okay. this one would be added. Okay. <coughs> Thanks, are there questions? Oh, move approval. Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye, opposed no, motion carries, three to zero. Item E3, consider approval of emergency purchases for diagnostics and repairs of two solid waste trucks one in the amount of $2,029.78, and one in the amount of $3,373.31. Uh, Commissioners, Tom Locke, again, call the work of solid waste. Uh, these two items are solid waste items. This first one um, is for um, a solid waste truck in which it has a, um, it has a Caterpillar type of engine. Um, we do not have any diagnostic uh, equipment for for Caterpillar um, although before before we we had our own crews trying to determine what the issue with the engine was at the time they were not able to do so so we brought it into Foley um, Foley who is the local uh, Caterpillar um, dealer here and they ran their test and found found the issue with it being a uh, combustion head temperature sensor, some wiring, and an injector. And they are the only certified Caterpillar engine uh, dealer here in, in the area. So we had them fix it to get the truck back in service as quickly as possible. Um, the funding for these, for these costs would be from the solid waste uh, department fund, which again uh, is no, uh, not funded by taxes, but it's just by user fees. And the second one <coughs> is also a solid waste truck. Um, this particular truck was losing power and the check engine light was coming on. Now this is a, um, a Cummings engine and that is the type of uh, diagnostic equipment that we have got approval to get. We have received the equipment but there was a back order on some cords that need to go with it, so we've not been able to utilize it yet. Um, hopefully we'll have that going as quickly as possible. But um, um, again, this, this one 
uh, or this issue was that some turbos needed to replace again, which has been a recurring theme, which is a common issue with with trucks the way these trucks are utilized. But um, again, they put the put the uh, truck back in service as quickly as possible. Um, we took it to Hoyt's Truck Center, who um, does repairs on these types of trucks. And again, the funding for this repair also would come from the Solid Waste Fund, which, as I just mentioned, is not tax funded, but user, user fee based funded. So if there's any questions regarding these two, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Thank you, Tom. Are there any questions? I should approve the emergency expenses. There's a motion by Commissioner Cook. Second. And second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries 3 to 0. Thank you very Thanks. Much. Item F, Parks and Recreation, number one, consider emergency purchase from Wheeler's Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling in the amount of $1,868.35 for repairs to the plumbing at Shawnee North Community Center. Good morning, Commissioners. John Knight, Parks and Recreation. <laughs> there are several uh, qualifications that uh, purchases fall into the emergency purchase category. If you'll see in my memo halfway through there, there's two key words, raw sewage. That moved it up quickly <laughs> onto our list as an emergency purchase. A actually, that caused us to, uh, uh, we could not open the Shawnee North Community Center until that was fixed, and staff got right on that, got that fixed <coughs> as quick as they possibly could with the help of the, the emergency purchase for you today. Be happy to answer any other questions you may have. Thank you, John. I'll move, motion. move approval. Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor, motion say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Three to zero. Thank you, Commissioner. Mm -hmm. Item G has been pulled. Um, item 5, Administrative Communications. Madam Chair, before we do, I'd like to just commend Mr. Knight and his staff out at the Old Town for the Apple Festival. I had the opportunity to attend on Sunday. Um, there were cars within old 10 blocks of the Old Town. Uh, the traffic did flow very freely. Uh, it was very well attended. It was very easy to get in and out. There were a lot of vendors there, and it was just a very well-established event. So I'd like to commend Mr. Knight on his staff and their abilities. Yes, yeah, I'd, I'd like to commend uh, Mr. Knight also uh, for a job well done. And, and uh, I didn't think I would ever hear Commissioner Cook <laughs> 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 giving bravos to uh, Mr. Knight, but uh, I concur. I concur. Well done. Well done, John. It's getting closer to winter time. <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> <laughs> Tom. Uh, Commissioner Tom Block, Public Works and Solid Waste. I mentioned this last week, but I want to do it again. This Saturday, we are having, Solid Waste is having its mobile household hazardous waste collection event. And this year, we are having it in Rossville at the Rossville High School parking lot. And that will be from 9 to noon on Saturday. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Good morning, Allison Alejo, Health Agency. Um, I just wanted to bring to your attention, I'm sure that you've heard that the WIC, um, there was some guidance for the WIC program in um, across the state and across the nation. Here in um, Kansas and in Shawnee County, we've been informed by KDHE to um, only print checks for the next 30 days uh, through the end of October. And then after that, uh, we'll have to wait for um, further guidance from the state. They're not, um, at this point with the federal shutdown, we are not, um, allowed to print any checks for November and December, and usually we do those for three months at a time. So now we're at the one month um, issuance of checks. Um, we do have about 6,700 participants in our WIC program. Um, we will be keeping those folks informed through social media, through media releases, um, Twitter accounts, things of that nature. Um, we also have the ability to communicate with them through our, um, we have a calling uh, phone message that we can leave, um, do mass calls if we need to. Um, it's very, very quickly changing. We're watching very closely <laughs> and um, just trying to adjust as much as we can as things are developing. Allison. Yes, sir. With this and talking about the issues of the WIC checks, but how will that affect some of our grant-funded positions that are the WIC? That's still something that we're waiting to hear mm -hmm. further guidance on. We know in our program we pr have probably about 22 <coughs> positions. Not all of them are full-time positions, um, but that are funded through the WIC program. Um, we just will continue to wait for guidance from the state. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else for administrative communications? 
I might just mention that uh, AT&T, the um, It Can Wait texting and driving, to take the pledge, you have to text, text it while you're not driving. Um, and you take the pledge through your cell phone, um, but then there's also a banner up on um, the floor right by the treasurer's office, clerk's office, register of deeds office. There's a banner that you can sign if you've taken the pledge, so that is, is up on that floor. We would encourage everyone to do that. Very important. Anything else under administrative communications? Okay. Uh, next item, please. Item six, executive session. Is there a need? There's not a need for executive session. We are adjourned. Thank you.